dive into a topic that I've been wanting to chat with you for a while and that is my favorite focal length to shoot with. I recently went through a lot of old work to make a brand new website which I'll be making a video about here in the next couple weeks but I was able to kind of look through a lot of my old work um, over the last 10 years and really kind of see some similarities, some differences, obvious growth as well which is exciting but it got me thinking. It got me thinking about what kinds of lenses I'd like to shoot with and kind of you know, the impact that your focal length can have on your photography work. And to me, there's kind of two main focal lengths that I feel like I really enjoy shooting with the most. And I wanted to chat a little bit about that with you guys today and also obviously share some sample images with you as well. So I would say overall, my favorite focal length for pretty much everything is around a 35 millimeter equivalent. Um, it's not too wide to the point where you kind of get this weird fisheye warped look, but it's also not too zoomed in where you can kind of really get a nice documentary feel um, to your images. And also, you know, it's just great for pretty much every scenario that you're going to find yourself in. Um, I do gravitate towards a 50 mil equivalent as well uh, pretty often, but I would say between those two focal lengths, those are kind of my favorites to shoot with for the most part. And it's interesting because, you know, when I first started with photography, I really loved the 24 millimeter focal length. And it's cool, you know, over the years to see how that's changed and, you know, the different focal lengths I enjoy shooting with now, but I for sure am sticking a lot more towards the 35 and 50 mil focal lengths for the most part. Now obviously I shoot on quite the wide variety of different cameras, and we'll first start with the Mamiya 7.2. So the Mamiya 7.2 obviously is a 6x7 rangefinder medium format film camera, and it shoots 6x7 negatives, truly one of the most beautiful cameras out there. I love this thing. I don't think I'll ever be selling it. In case I want to shoot a special project or bring it along on a road trip, this camera is just incredible for travel photography and really kind of photographing scenes. It just has this really beautiful kind of characteristic to all the negatives. And I think a lot of that has to do with Mamiya's incredible lineup of different lenses that you can use. So I have two main lenses for this camera, but the one that I use the most by far is the 65 millimeter F4 lens. And that equates to roughly a 32 millimeter lens. So I could kind of classify it as a 35 mil. And this lens has always been on my camera for the past you know six maybe even almost seven years now that i've owned the camera the 65 mil i would say has been on my actual camera body maybe 95 percent of the time the other five percent is uh, the 150 millimeter lens but i don't use that too often now the reason i love the 65 millimeter lens on the mamiya 72 is it just feels very immersive you know again it's wide enough to where you can really capture any sort of scene indoor outdoor um, big massive kind of painterly looking landscapes this camera can really do it all and the lens, I think, just really kind of allows me to shoot the way that I like to. And at the end of the day, lenses are just that, you know, they're personal preference. And so whatever focal length you feel like works best for you, obviously shoot with that. But for me, the 65 millimeter on the Mamiya 72 is just one of the best out there. And it's a lens that I've been using for a very long time. I truly love all of the images I've been able to take with this camera. Now moving on to the Contax T3. Now this also has a 35 millimeter lens, uh, another one of my absolute favorite cameras. And I've been using different variations of Contax cameras, mainly T3s for quite some time now. And I've been able to accumulate quite a bit of negatives over the years. And uh, the T3 obviously is just so great for kind of bringing it along to parties, documenting daily life, shooting photos of family, of friends. This fits in your pocket so well and the ability to shoot on a 35 millimeter Contax Zeiss lens is pretty incredible for that small of a camera. And I bring this guy around very often. I haven't been shooting it as much as I normally do lately, but again, I've shot so much on it in the past and I was able to dig up a lot of those old photos, uh, many of which I, are still some of my favorite photos I've taken to date. And you know, the T3 over something like the T2 or any sort of other point and shoot camera, I just love the 35 millimeter focal length. I know the T2 has a 38 millimeter lens, which honestly is not that different, but I do love just the actual 35 millimeter focal length. I feel like, again, I'm just so used to it now. To me, the lens on the T3 is just so great and so sharp. I really enjoy shooting with that camera. Obviously another camera that I shoot with quite a bit is the Fuji GFX 100S. And I would say overall, I've taken more photos on this camera than almost any other camera I've owned. I've really been using it a lot over the last several years. Over the last week, I just wrapped up two really cool shoots that I'm excited to share more with you. But long story short, I shot mainly the same focal length for both of these projects as well. You know, shooting on film cameras, shooting on medium format digital cameras, 
the focal length that I like to shoot on and tend to shoot on does stay somewhat the same, which is pretty cool. Now, obviously with the 100S, I do shoot, I think, a much more large variety of different focal lengths. Um, I do love the 110 millimeter lens. I love the 80 mil lens, but I also love the 32 to 64 and also the brand new 55 1.7 that I was able to rent for these last couple shoots. And those are much more close to a 35 mil equivalent on the medium format sensor. But the cool thing is, is you know, I can pair those photos on the 100S with images that were taken on the Mamiya, on the Contax, and they all have this really cool, but also kind of similar look and feel to them. And that's where I think things get interesting is because focal length really does kind of dictate how your images look, and more importantly, how they look together. I find that really interesting when looking at other photographers' works. People definitely tend to stick to similar focal lengths. You know, there's all that amazing uh, kind of skateboard Americana photography that was in the 90s and early 2000s. Those were shot a lot on really wide, kind of almost fisheye-like lenses and it kind of defines that photography style, which I thought was really interesting. The same goes for telephoto images, you know, images of sports. A lot of times with landscape photography, people are shooting much more zoomed in lenses so they can compress the background and give kind of a interesting look and feel that your eyes can't really see. All this to say, focal length really does have a bigger part than you think it does in defining your own photography. The final camera that I shoot with the most is the Fuji X-T5, which obviously you guys have seen many videos on as of late with the YouTube channel. So this camera is definitely one of my new favorite cameras. And the interesting thing is I pretty much have only used one lens for the most part. I bought three lenses originally but truly have only gravitated towards one, and that is the 23 millimeter F2. And I'm not sure if it's because of the size or the form factor or the actual focal length, but I love this lens on the X-T5. 23 millimeters on the APS-C sensor equates to just about 35 mil. And I do find this interesting, you know, with all the other cameras that I've already talked about, the X-T5 with the 23 mil is a pretty amazing setup for me and for my daily life for taking on trips for just, you know, a smaller form factor camera that really can pack a punch. I actually made an entire video on the setup that I use with the Fuji flash as well and the 23 mil lens. If you guys want to check that video out, I'll leave it linked down below. But overall, the setup is super simple and I've been able to kind of really dial it into my personal preferences. And along with the 23 mil lens on the X-T5, I've been able to shoot some pretty beautiful stuff but yeah i'm curious what all of your guys's favorite focal lengths are drop them down below 35 millimeter i think is my favorite but i also again really love 50 and i do love a telephoto focal length every once in a while this video is going to be the last one for the year so it's been a pretty incredible 2023 i can't thank you all enough for your support the channel has seen quite a bit of growth this year which i'm very excited about we actually just hit 200,000 subscribers so i can't thank all of you guys enough it really means the world that you guys continue to watch all these videos and it seems like we're trending in a really kind of fun direction with the stuff that we're making. So very proud of what we've been able to accomplish here on the YouTube channel. Now, before this video wraps up, I do want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, which is Squarespace, for sponsoring today's episode. As you guys know by now, Squarespace is a longtime supporter of this YouTube channel and my creative endeavors. They truly are a great backbone in my creative workflow and my process, especially when it comes to making a website. The best thing about Squarespace is you don't have to know anything about coding or laying out a website to really make a website that fits your workflow. Everything from gallery pages to e-commerce sites, uh, being able to have just a nice landing page for your clients to look at, Squarespace makes it extremely easy to lay all of this out in a way that works for you. I've been using Squarespace now for pretty much my entire photography career, and I can't recommend them enough for anyone out there looking to make their own photography website. If you guys wanna check out Squarespace for yourself, there'll be a link down in the description to receive 10% off your first website or domain purchase. Thank you so much as always to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and thanks to you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one.